Alright, so over the weekend, I did the usual thing a gamer does, which is scroll through the never-ending list of games available on the market in hopes of finding something fresh and new. I eventually ended up on the Epic Game Store launch. I know, I know, I can only imagine the number of people that just closed this video upon mentioning that platform. Nope. I get it. You're mad because it's another competitor locking away games for exclusivity and it just doesn't compare to Steam. You're not wrong, but the games on there do make it hard to stay away. Damn you, Epic! With that said, there was a game that snagged me like a fish out of water. Now, I'm not your go-to battle royale YouTuber, so it's not something I cover on this channel. However, I like to feature games or try out games that intrigue me, and the cycle did just that. Welcome, prospectors, to Fortuna 3, your fortune-filled playground. Swarming with hostile alien wildlife. And of course, other prospectors who want what you want. And this is their idea of fun. The weather on Fortuna is a little bit unstable. Say hello to the cycle, a devastating weather anomaly that will obliterate any life forms not native to the planet. And that means you. You better be sure to escape before it eats you alive. So is the cycle just another battle royale? Not even close. Yes, we have multiplayer matches. Yes, you are on borrowed time. Yes, we have guns, lots of them. We have shiny skins and fancy dance moves, and even a mini-map. And sometimes, memory leaks. Nobody's perfect. But we offer so much more, prospectors. The challenge is real. There's a shit ton of monsters to face. To help you, we provide awesome abilities. Ever heard of the snare trap? Or the heavy turret? Imagine the havoc when you combine the two. Sweet, sweet mayhem. We even got wheels. Strike a pact with other prospectors and face the dangers of Fortuna 3 together, or double cross them and stab them in the back. It's up to you. And these are the contracts offered by the various factions. Complete the most contracts, escape, and you win. So you do PvE and PvP at the same time, and you haven't seen the half of it. The cycle is not a battle royale. That's why we call it PvEVP, or in the long form, free to play, player versus environment versus player, first person competitive quest shooter, Royale. While its main marketing push is, we're not a battle royale, it's still that PvP like shoot and loot aspect, you know, that stay alive and be one of the few remaining kind of vibe. However, it adds some really cool elements to the game, and let me explain. Some similarities arise the second you launch the game. Greet it with the typical buy our battle pass now, with a carbon copy of every single battle pass you have seen in the past. One level for the poor people that would just like to play free to play, and the other level gold for the rich people. Being that this game is free to play and early access, I noticed the usual push here. Give us your money so we can continue to make this game even better. I'm sure you're familiar with this. We're in beta for the past four years, but we like ka-ching, you know what I mean? Whatever. If the game is worth it, I don't mind spending for it. And I eventually did buy the battle pass because guess what? I actually liked what I saw and when I played the game, I didn't mind supporting a team of devs that, well, did a good job. Especially when it comes to innovating a deadbeat horse called Battle Royale. So with monetization out of the way, I started the tutorial and began the journey of becoming what the game is calling a prospector. A member of three different factions, which you can choose, who go down to the planet and gather resources, complete contracts, fight monsters, and survive against other players who, well, want to get off this planet alive. 
Weird. I know. We, we just got to this planet. Why are we getting off? The story goes that this planet cannot sustain life long enough, so that's their workaround for you having to leave. Anyways, when launching into a game, you choose a faction. You can switch between these at any time before dropping into a game, which is cool because they're not locking you to a specific faction. By choosing these, you level them up and unlock what they call blueprints, specialized abilities, gear, or mods that can be crafted with things you've gathered on the planet. These things you craft are faction locks, so it all depends on what it is you like more. I personally chose the faction Osiris, which offers you know more speed or evasion focused things, but Kariloff, I think it's called, faction might be something I might dip into later because it focuses on heavy weapons and armor. So, so you know, also they have an ability that lets you build a turret. Hello? <laughs> Alright, I'm getting sidetracked here. Choose a faction, drop onto the planet. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. Being dropped like this in a pod just feels so good. Something about it reminding me of like 40k drop pods. It's so satisfying. So thank you for not making me skydive out of a damn bus. Anyways, once you're on the ground, you have several things you can do because contracts vary each time you start around. So on the right side of the screen, it tells you which contracts are available. This can also be seen in the pre-game lobby before starting a match so you know what you're getting yourself into. You can do everything from capture a point, drill minerals, refine lithium, power up facilities, salvage drones, and more. There's about seven different things that you can do. Again, these are randomized and more will probably be added as the game continues to develop. So after completing one of these, you earn a star for completing that said contract. And that's how you essentially win the game. Be the one to earn the most contracts out of 20 players and leave the planet alive and best believe that everyone else on the planet is trying to do the same. So the possibility of you running into someone doing a contract and interrupting them is very high and vice versa. I'm not going to go into details on how to do each contract unless you'd like me to in future episodes on this channel. Wink wink nudge nudge. But what's important here is that once you do complete a contract you can do it again but this time the amount needed to complete it is increased. So choosing whether you want to do it again or start another contract is a choice you're going to have to make. Things get even more interesting as you play. For example, when coming across a player, you can request to be buddies, becoming a dual threat. This request can also be cancelled at any time, meaning people can pretend to be your new best friend while in the back of their minds all they want to do is kill you. God damn it, Barb! This also means that while you're wandering around all by yourself and you attack someone, you better be careful because they could be partied up with someone and trust me, they will hunt your ass down. Him. On top of all of this, your loadout is not based on looting weapons on the map like a typical Royale. It's predetermined on the loadout screen before the game. You choose the weapons you want to bring into battle. And once you've acquired enough currency by farming monsters, you can call down any of these items, be it weapons, abilities, or gear to further expand your arsenal. The system kind of reminded me of CSGO, how you can choose what weapons you can buy before a game, but in this, you're killing dragons and shit to gain money, which I thought was kind of cool. It, it's kind of neat. I really enjoy this mechanic, because once you've farmed enough money, you're actually a force to be reckoned with, and you feel powerful. There's definitely Battle Royale-ish elements to this game. For example, it's time-based, so while the zone doesn't shrink as other Royales do, you will start taking damage if you stay too long. So this is the chopper! or the evac point, which is the climax of it all. This is what it all comes down to. Players gather here in the heap of panic to try to leave the planet, clearing the monsters for the ship to land or killing each other to be placed above them. It's absolute chaos and I love it. It's nail biting gameplay adds to the panic of disorder. The music combined with your anxiety takes over of your life and death moment, all while having one goal in mind. Get me the fuck out of here. The game is definitely worth it if this is your cup of tea. It's free, it's fun, and I tip my hat to Jaeger, the developer, for taking a jab at something that I'm sure we're all tired of seeing or hearing. They put a spin on it and flip it on its head to create something new, which I can appreciate to the fullest. I should also mention that even if you're defeated, you have a second life, so you can keep your loadout and you're not punished to the extremes. Also, you can even revive yourself if you stay in the down state long enough, making for some really exciting plays. Anyways, let me know if you gave this game a try or want to try. I'd be interested to hear what you think about it and want to hear your opinions about this variation on the genre. So as YouTubers usually say at this point in the video, make sure you sub and like. You know what? You're free to do whatever you want. I'm too sketchy. And I'm out. Peace.
Sketchy.